today, whether it is your smart television that you have in your home, or whether it's the smartphone that you have, or a smart watch that you're wearing, um, or a smart teddy bear that your children are playing with, or a smart pill that you swallow that sends information from within you, um, all of these modern technologies work in the same way. They work by gathering data, information about us. And that's an aspect that we're not going to change. That's a fact of life. The real question is who owns and controls these technologies and the data and the insight that is being gathered about us. Now, if we can answer that question with we do as individuals, there's no problem here. We have individual sovereignty. We uh, own and control them. And we are getting smarter about ourselves. So that's where the smart comes in. But if the answer is that corporations own and control these technologies and this data, then they are getting smarter about us. And by extension, if this data is available to governments, as we know that it is from the Snowden revelations, uh, then we're talking about a very different type of social system that we're living in. We're talking about a corporatocracy. We're talking about what Shoshana Zuboff would call surveillance capitalism. And that is the problem today, because we're not sleepwalking into this. We are there today. So the first thing that we have to do is acknowledge where we are so that we know where to move away from. Um, and that is part of uh, you know, our remit with what we're doing with the seventh pillar here. Uh, so there are, uh, you said, what are the most urgent things uh, we should be doing? Well, uh, there are some fires we need to put out very urgently. Um, in Europe, for example, there is an e-privacy proposal that is now at the parliament. Um, and the E, I believe, stands for erosion of privacy. Um, because there are, for example, some of the uh, provisions that are in there, they all sound positive, but if you actually interpret them, they're quite negative. So. Um, smart cities. If you are in a smart city and just by having a phone with you as you're walking around, you're being surveilled via Wi-Fi and via your Bluetooth, all the city has to do or all the people that are doing that have to do is to put a sign up there saying you're being watched. And it's like, okay, oh, thank you for telling me. Um, how, do I, how do I not be watched? Oh, turn off your phone. Unacceptable. Um, so we're granting internet service providers the same rights as Google and Facebook to monetize our data. And all they have to do is ask for our quote unquote consent. However, if we don't give our consent, they don't give us access to their services. So it's not consent. It's a very predatorial, uh, to borrow a term, form of consent. So there are fires that we need to fight. The e-privacy directive, is uh, the proposal, is, is one of them. Uh, strong encryption and end-to-end -end encryption is under threat. Uh, in the UK, they actually passed the IP Act, uh, which grants the government uh, the right to ask for backdoors on all surveillance technologies. Ask someone from England or from the UK whether they know about this and more than likely they'll say, I've never heard of it. Um, and, and so that's, that's something we need to fight. Net neutrality, uh, the, everyone having equal access to the internet is under threat right now. So these are fires we need to fight in the very, very short term that we can. If we're looking into the medium term and the longer term, we need to regulate effectively. We can't regulate these companies effectively when they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to lobby the European Commission because we are institutionally corrupt. We have lobbying, we have revolving doors. The very people at the European Commission today who should actually be protecting our rights as citizens may in two or three years time be working for the companies that they should be regulating. This is corruption. We have public-private partnerships where uh, public, service, public institutions work with private institutions, um, but which constitute really a de facto privatization of our most intimate data. In Italy, the full entire medical records of 61 million people are in the process of being sold to IBM. In the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, all of the license plate information has been given to Google in real time so that Google can tell the city and the citizens uh, when there are free car park spaces, but they also know where everyone is. So 
there, in the medium term, we really need to regulate, but we can't regulate, no matter what our policies are, if we don't battle institutional corruption, if we don't remove the uh, influence of corporate finance in public policy making, then we're not going to be able to regulate effectively. And then, let's think about what we can do in the long term. Because criticizing, understanding this is important where we are, but we need a compelling, inspirational counter-narrative to Silicon Valley. Because they have tools that work today. They come to Europe and they say the only way to do technology is the way we do technology. And we have to be able to say, bullshit. No, this is not true. We <laughs> We know that we can build decentralized, free and open, interoperable technologies from the commons. I want you to imagine an internet of people, because that is our goal here, to build an internet of people. Imagine an internet where, starting in Europe, every European citizen has ownership and control of their own space on the internet. And then when we're talking about these smart things, all of our smart things can then connect to this place that we own and we control. And this is not a system that will require you to have technical knowledge to use. This is an interoperable system. So any organization, lots of organizations hopefully, will host these for us in an interoperable system. And because the core of this is something that should be a human right. We should be supporting it and funding it from the commons. But then, we can, we, because it's free and open, anyone can build and expand upon it and then share that back to the commons. So what we're building, really, with an internet of people is an ethical core on which we can build an economy uh, and, and we can build uh, an alternative, uh, a, a counter-narrative, one that is based on ethics, one that is based on a core uh, that is compatible with democracy. And I think that you know, we have a unique opportunity with DM, we have a unique opportunity here in Europe to make this vision, this dream a reality, and that is what we're here to do today with you and together with you, and I think that that is what we can achieve with DM. Thank you.